Welcome to Silverstone, the home of the British Grand Prix. That's not why we're here today though. We're here for my first event in the Type R Trophy and my first time ever at Silverstone. So by the looks of it, a decent amount of the grid in the Type R Trophy were testing the day before and I didn't. So maybe a mistake in hindsight would have been good to get a good chunk of extra running around this track. So my first time ever around this track will be in qualifying, which is obviously isn't ideal, but it is what it is. The Type R Trophy is one of the, the best in the UK right now in terms of club motorsport spec series. It's incredibly competitive. At the front, you've got a number of champions, loads of them. I think there's like 10 or 15 champions of some sort on the grid, which is quite special. Of course, I'm not expecting to be near the front, but I just want to have a good day here today. Not really going to the weekend with any expectations, just to really try and enjoy it. Good morning and welcome to Silverstone. I promise you it is. This is just the inside of my car to start this video because it's quite noisy outside as we're already getting quite close to going out for the first session. So we came up yesterday and camped overnight. A bit of a rough night because we had to just camp a random part of Silverstone because apparently we weren't allowed to, to camp in the paddock which was a bit of a strange one but um, nonetheless we got some of the things prepped on the car and uh, yeah now just in the morning brought it over and uh, Dad's just doing the finishing touches before qualifying so this is my first event in the Type R Trophy uh, fully not expecting anything um, just go out there and have fun that's the main thing here today uh, it's a new track for me I'm on new tyres brand new tyres and a new type of tyre that I've never driven on before. The weather's looking a bit iffy, but yeah, the main thing is just go out and have some fun. There's a big enough grid to hopefully have a battle with a few people in there. So yeah, just looking forward to, to seeing how the day goes. It's gonna be a busy one because I'm doing road sports as well. So you'll see that in another video soon because that's way too much to put into one video. Anyway, regardless, thank you for tuning. But anyway, regardless, we're gonna get out on track very soon. We're going to get out on track very soon for the first session of the day. We're actually the first session, literally, so it's been an even tighter turnaround than normal because I don't think we've actually ever been the first session of the day. So let's go. I'm looking forward to this and just, yeah, main thing is go out there and have fun. No expectations, otherwise I'll probably be disappointed because there's some really quick guys in here. So just go out there and just see what I can do. The format of this event is all in one day, one qualifying and two races. I think the races are 15 minutes long possibly 20 minutes long but the qualifying session at the start of the day is obviously very important for a number of reasons of course if you're near the front you want to be getting that pole position to set your sights towards the race victory or a podium but for me even more important driving this track for the first time ever and these tires for the first time ever and this car for the first time in a little while so there were a lot of nerves going into this weekend I can't lie for unfortunately I've got a load of superstitions going to racing events now and I don't know how that's come about or why but it has and I was very worried coming to the weekend because of all of these uh, all these unpredictable things that could happen this weekend so that's probably not what I wanted straight away was to have a little bit of a slidey moment on cold tyres but that's that's just it you need to warm up the tyres before you push I mean I didn't think I was exactly pushing there but obviously maybe just should have taken it a little bit easier on the outlap there but it's nothing big it's no drama whatsoever so the opening laps was just getting used to the circuit trying to keep an eye on where people were braking of course as I said before quite a few people were testing the day before so looking at where they're braking is going to be quite helpful in terms of setting myself up here to try and set a decent lap time in quality here but I really was not expecting anything as I previously mentioned it was just all about enjoying this weekend as well and truly I was one of the the back drivers here so just just try and learn so you can see from the windscreen we've had to cross out a couple of numbers because we had to run the number three this weekend because apparently you can't run three numbers within this championship for whatever reason I don't know that was one of the things the bottom of our list to, to sort out so hence why it's only just got a black cross through it rather than actually being done properly but I just thought I'd give you that reason so in front here I think I've got one of the, the quicker drivers in front so I'm just keeping an eye on him looking at where his braking points are as I mentioned I didn't want to do anything too silly on the the opening laps of qualifying but of course with such a short session to learn the track you really need to start understanding where the limits could be into some of the braking zones one thing about Silverstone 
I think for you know, me mentally going to a weekend, it's a flatter circuit, which I think helps psychologically for me because it's got loads of runoff. And you know, if you do miss your breaking point, for example, which you know happened quite a bit in qualifying, there's either a bit of grass or quite a lot of tarmac. Whereas if you do the same thing at something like Brands Hatch, of course, there's little to no runoff in a lot of areas. So that that was the difference here, and why maybe I was a little bit happier going into this and trying to push a bit harder in qualifying on a track and tyre situation that I had no idea um, about. So. That's the reason why maybe I was a little bit more confident that I would have been going to Brands in the same scenario. But regardless, in qualifying, I, th I think I was starting to get here. I think this was my fastest lap. It's kind of hard to tell because the 750 Motors Club don't run the TSL timing system that the majority of events do. So the other timing system, I don't think really lets you know when your fastest lap was set. It tells you how many laps you've done, what your fastest lap was, but not when it was set. But I'm pretty confident here it was my last lap of the session. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a good lap or anything. It was still, I think about four seconds off pole. There was quite a bit of a gap between first and second. Adam Shepard, who leading this championship and has since won the championship, is just an insanely quick driver. And of course has his car well set up as well. But he's the benchmark and of course, not many people have got close to him this season. For me though, my goal was to get in the midfield uh, you know if I was doing the full season of course this is my first event in this series so maybe slightly lower than that expectations but this put us I'd say at the front of the back of the pack <laughs> if that makes any sense I definitely wasn't in the midfield but I think it was less than a second to P12 which I know sounds not great but for me that was uh, not too bad I think mentally I was quite happy with that of course, when you're racing, you always want to be quick, you always want to be towards the front of the pack, but I think being realistic here, this was not terrible for my first qualifying. Uh, I probably could have done worse. Well, obviously I could have done worse, but regardless, I wasn't too disappointed. So that's qualifying done for my first Type R Trophy race. Now, fully expected not to be near the front, but 21st might not sound especially good, but I'll tell you what, I'm actually quite happy with that because I looked at the times, I think a second took me up to sort of around about 12th place. So I think I can, I'm not going to say I can easily find a second, but I think, you know, that, that time is there for me to gain. And obviously I realised that still outside the top 10 is not really what you should be aiming for, but still this is a really competitive grid, some really, really fast drivers in here. So I can't be, I can't be too disappointed with any result here today, but considering I didn't do any testing, I was quite happy with, with how that went. The car felt good. Um, as expected, with front wheel drive cars quite understeery, so I might put a little bit of extra pressures in the front just to hopefully alleviate that. I told you that we're doing the road sports event with Christian on this same day, so uh, I'm going to be able to go over there and start my qualifying session for that in a minute. Um, but yeah, so I've been speaking to him about possible tyre pressures, so I think maybe I miscalculated a little bit, so I'll probably go a little bit up on the front. It's not, not drastic, but a little bit should help in these uh, shorter sprint races. So yeah, okay, it wasn't like the best result in the world, but I think the performance to where the midfield is isn't that far, probably like half a second. So just hopefully go out there and have some good fun, hopefully some good racing. And I do apologize, the, the B-roll and stuff like that probably not gonna be so fantastic in these videos, this one and the, the road sports video, because yeah, I'm just super, super busy here, not really gonna have a chance to get out of the camera and, and do all that sort of stuff. But I'll try, I'll try. But nonetheless, looking forward to the race coming up soon, but I better rush off and do road sports. You'll see that in the video soon. Because of the format of these days, it's all pretty quick, the turnaround between quali, race one and race two and to throw it into the mix as i mentioned already i was doing a road sports race with christian on the same day so that meant two qualifying sessions and three races so it was a busy one and i fully expected it to be a bit hectic but regardless i was just relaxing after qualifying until i went over and did my qualifying with christian in road sports and before you know it it's time to go racing so we're gearing up here for my first race in the Type R Trophy. As mentioned, I'll do a separate video with the road sports qualifying and racing there. It's actually an interesting video in itself, so I'm looking forward to sharing that one with you uh, soon. But here we are gearing up to head out to the grid. First race with the Type R Trophy and aim just to go and have fun. So here we are, visor down, put it into first, and get ready for the first race. 
here at Silverstone International. So I was one of the last cars on the grid, so there wasn't much of a wait. So building up the revs and not a terrible start actually. Pretty equal with the cars around me. Maybe a tad quicker than one or two, but just the silly thing that I do and I realise already I'm just short shifting a little bit here and there was a car down the inside of me at turn one so I just turned out of that one there so possibly could have could have attacked that one a bit more and not let him through but he had his nose down the inside here so I just wanted to to get through there so turning into the sort of first main complex here and I spoke to the guy in the martini coloured Honda there and he said this was his first race so he wanted to actually start at the back but they didn't let him so he was sort of drifting towards the back there so that wasn't really like a legitimate overtake he was sort of just letting a few people through to get into his own rhythm but now I see in front a car that I qualified ahead of and a couple of cars in front that I wasn't a million miles off in qualifying so that was my aim I was locked on in front here and whilst I was still short shifting away I was <laughs> losing a little bit of time to them but of course as the, the pack is quite closer in the first lap of the race here not everyone's able to, to fully attack on the opening lap because everything's bunched up and you're not able to maybe hit your normal marks so into the final complex and unfortunately there was a little bit of contact in front a couple of cars off one I think ended up getting stuck in the gravel one managed to or I think two of them managed to, to get out of it and I think unfortunately both of them had to retire so that's three cars out there so one position lost on the start one position gained uh, through the martini car and then three gained with the incident in front so there was a safety car for a few laps here so I was able to just sort of sit there regather my thoughts and think about what I could do on a restart here so I was fully not expecting to go out there and overtake a load of people in front of me as I mentioned only one car in front there is actually one that I qualified ahead of so I was hoping to maybe try and get back past him and then just generally pick up my pace and try and go quicker than I did in quali but we're getting ready for a restart here and as you can see there's a bit of a, a bit of a gap here so I haven't exactly had the best restart here I've left quite a few car lengths unintentionally to the car in front but then likewise the red cars left maybe even bigger gap to the, the group in front here so I didn't realize it at the time but slipstream is actually quite important around this circuit obviously you've got the long back straight and the, the home straight where you cross the start finish line is also quite quite big so you know getting that slipstream definitely will help you I'm not saying it's seconds but it's you know sure a few tenths so I've closed up on the restart here I've managed to get onto the back of the red car and we're starting once again but the gap in front of him is quite substantial here so I mean that's obviously a bit unfortunate for both of us would have liked to have been close to them and maybe nab that slipstream but didn't really expect to go out and overtake any of those guys it was all about really trying to get past this red car here which I did qualify in front of so my main target at this point was to get past him again and I did realize in the time that this was a car that qualified behind so that was really my target I saw the cars in front and of course with the gap I didn't really expect to be able to close that down so that was all about trying to get past here so down the back straight once again you'll see the slipstream okay I'm not cruising up onto the back of him it's not like some sports but I definitely am at least keeping with him here and even whilst I am not shifting properly you can see I'm, so I'm still short shifting which isn't ideal I think at least I was sort of keeping up with him possibly closing in a little bit with that slipstream I say a slightly better line for me through here so I was setting up possibly could I go for an overtake down the inside here but I also in the back of my mind had oh the incident on the first lap of the race happened here maybe through a bit of an ambitious dive down the inside but so I decided to, to back it out and try and get a better run through these final couple of corners which I think I just about do he went a tad wide one of the corners before I didn't want to poke my nose up the inside there I had flashbacks to Alex Albon and Kevin Magnussen having a little bit of a moment there so decided that was best but a few laps later we're still on his tail and trying to do something different here at the same time I wish I kind of had a rear facing camera because it'd be nice to show you that you can see just in the mirror there that there was a car the martini car was right up behind me as well so it's a nice little battle here between the three of us so 
I didn't throw it up the inside here, but was also aware that this isn't a race that goes on forever, so I need to go and try and get an overtake in at some point here. So, you can see how close the three of us were, even in slow motion. It's nice to see, actually. Some of this footage is really great. Thanks to John for providing, as always. But I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you ride on board with me here out on the track for a lap or so. I think this is when the battle got really interesting, so I'm going to stop talking and hand you over to the raw car audio, which is quite interesting to listen to. busy really enjoyed that though nice fair battle with those guys really appreciate that and I think I spoke to them both afterwards and really really nice just to, to have a nice little battle like that I mean I know it's cost us a lot of time you can see actually he did look up the inside here again and uh, the martini car as well but I think it just played out here that I would defend the inside line here and even though it was close after this moment I did manage to pull away after a little bit of an off-track excursion here so good stuff really really enjoyed that it's a really friendly paddock here actually this m Motor club you'd have seen in my other videos sort of promoting the series through my adventures around the paddock how, how great it is but I've got to say it really is a nice place to to be and actually it's starting to feel quite big as a club actually there's just so much going on so if you like that sort of thing really is quite special here so after this got my head down tried to put in some consistent laps here because of the safety car there isn't really much of a worry about getting lapped even though you can see that the gap in front has got quite big because of course we were squabbling away and of course it's going to cost us time I'm not saying that without that I'd be on those guys and battling with them but I definitely think our multi-lap battle ended up giving quite a big gap to the cars in front oh well I got my head down and just tried to put in consistent lap times here now strangely and unfortunately I didn't actually manage to go any quicker in the the race I'd have expected to possibly pick up a little bit of time but maybe just in qualifying everything had sort of come together and I'd done as well as I thought I could have done but for some reason just nothing in the race ever felt quite as good as the qualifying lap I guess on the, the qualifying lap you're really sort of just going for that one fast lap or maybe a back off lap then going fast but here of course you're trying to be consistent over a race now I definitely wasn't consistent over the race but I think obviously my, my lap times were consistently around the same sort of mark once I managed to get some free air but I was a little bit disappointed in myself not to be able to go out there and go quicker than my qualifying time because that was the aim of course so I've got to say, Silverstone International, whilst it is a, a good track, I don't think it's been one of my favourite this year. Now, I've actually visited a few other tracks since recording this video here. I've done the National Circuit over at Silverstone, I've done Snetterton, and maybe even one other one at the same time. It's, it's been a busy few weeks and nearly, I guess, months since this race right here, hence why the video hasn't got up as quickly. But in terms of my favourite tracks this year, unfortunately I wouldn't say Silverstone International has been right at the top, but it's still a decent track, it's still a decent track. So we're now on the last lap of the race here, and 
just trying to bring it home at this point. I realised the only way we were going to be getting positions is if something happened in France weren't retired. So I was just trying to hit my marks and just bring the car home here. Also was kind of experimenting with lines on a few corners. But I couldn't, as I've already mentioned, seem to find a quicker way around the circuit. I think mentally maybe just had to hit a bit of a block in this race once there was such a big gap in front. There wasn't really anyone to sort of focus on and gauge my experiments in terms of lines, braking and throttle application. So a little bit of a scruffy last couple of corners here, slightly out braking myself. But as we go around the final corner up to the finish line, which is quite close to the last corner to cross the line, and I was just keeping the throttle flat until I crossed the second line because I wasn't exactly sure which was the finish line. I know that sounds stupid, but I'm assuming it was the first line, but just to be safe. The cars behind me were a little bit of a gap behind, but it wasn't a huge amount, so I was just making sure, of course, just getting to the flag and saying I've done it. So, cool down lap. Unfortunately, I had some problems with cameras in, in, in the car this weekend, so some didn't record at certain points. Bit frustrating but regardless i've got this little bit for the cool down lap at least and then as i came around this corner here this is where john was filming you've seen the footage from so just gave him a little wave and of course giving all the marshals a wave as a thank you so overall not exactly a special race in terms of result but i think in terms of enjoyment that was really important for me had some nice battles in there and just had a, a good experience out there on track which is exactly what i wanted here from my Type R Trophy experience and of course the aim going to the second race was to one try and improve my lap time and to get a similar result at least and maybe get a better finishing result we'll just obviously see how it goes but just have a look inside here at the garages really cool to be able to use the garages here at Silverstone obviously we're not the scale of F1 team so you can fit multiple cars in the same area they'd only fit one Formula 1 car but still nice friendly area within the paddock and really cool to get garage. I think most people actually got garages to be fair. So there we are, Type R Trophy race one done. Finally after like a year and a half of uh, doing or driving this car we got it out in a series that it was designed for so really happy about that. Now if you look at the result which I think was 17th that doesn't sound fantastic but when you look at it you know it's a competitive field one two haven't driven on these tyres before and don't know this circuit really at all and the fact that I know that I've got a lot of time to find just generally really enjoyable race had some really good battles in there um, forgive me I can't remember the two names of the guys but you saw in the video some really nice battles of them uh, I got, actually got a decent enough start I thought I was going to get you know, I thought I was going to be dropping out to last place on, on the opening lap but no we we got past someone on the start but then lost a the position at the start if that makes any sense so it all ended equal in the first half lap and then we had that incident through the final complex which uh, didn't look too nice there was there was three cars involved one uh, one ended up in the gravel stopped I assume one came into the pits and then I think one pulled off at turn one or something like that so I hope everyone's all right with that because obviously you don't want to be seeing anything like that but you know I guess these sort of things do happen in the opening lap of a, a spec series because you know everyone is so closely um, well, so tight, I guess, in terms of lap time. But um, yeah, everyone wants to go for moves and get them done early on. Regardless, really happy with that. I mean, I, I know you shouldn't really be celebrating 17th place, but I'm really just, you know, enjoyed the race, and that's what you, you know, that's what you go motorsport racing for. If you don't enjoy it, then what's the point? And there have been a few races this year where, where that's been the case. So uh, yeah, happy with that. I guess if we can maintain that position in the second race, that would be good because obviously there'll be some fast guys uh, probably coming from from the back of the field. Uh, yeah, I mean. We'll see what happens, but just try and hold my own and enjoy it. Let's see. It's time for race number two. We were one of the first races to get a second race, so it was important for me here to just get out there and enjoy it. In between my first race and second race, I'd done the road sports race with Christian, and even though the sky in the background of this shot may not tell it, there was actually a, quite a bit of rain in that road sports race, so... I experienced all the conditions here <laughs> to take Silverstone, so yeah, good to get those experiences under my belt because I haven't really experienced much rain running in a Civic and whilst I'd have probably preferred it to be in my car so I could have used it in future races, at least I got it in Christian's car which isn't a million miles away, even though as I've already mentioned it does feel quite different actually when driving it. So formation lap and 
getting ready for the second race of the day and well if you follow anything on social media unfortunately you probably know what happens next so I'm gonna hand over to the raw audio to show you what happened Wow, that was a tough way to end the day. A very short second race. Massive thanks to all the Silverstone Marshall, safety team, medics, everyone involved that checked up on all of us. The main thing is everyone was all right. Everyone got out of their cars and after checkups, everyone was fine and released from the medical centre fine. So massive thanks to everyone there involved and they made sure that this event obviously was a little bit traumatic for me. First time that this happened made sure that we got over it and got out of the cars okay. Whew, wow, that's not how I wanted my first race in, or the race event in this championship to go and at Silverstone, but it is what it is. We have to move on from it now. Thankfully, the cars can be repaired and no injuries for any of the drivers, which is the main thing. It was a situation where I had a bad start and in doing so, I was trying to give space to the guy on my outside who's coming down the grass and then I guess created a situation where there were just too many cars trying to go for the same space of tarmac. I mean, Silverstone is a wide track, but unfortunately it wasn't wide enough for the amount of civics that wanted to go side by side through there. So I was hitting the rear right and that spun me around. So it is what it is. It's, it's racing. That's the risky take. But overall, weirdly, I can look back on this day and not too negatively. The first qualifying session in the race were actually really enjoyable. So overall, weirdly, it's not a terrible day. Thankfully, since the car has been fixed by the great guys at uh, KMC in Kettering, and uh, the car will be out for the end of the season. Probably only for like a race or two, just to make sure everything's all good. But thankfully, it's back, and I look forward to getting back in it again. But as mentioned, main thing is everyone's okay. Got out of their cars. The cars can be fixed, and just thankful for everyone involved, making sure that the day ended okay. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.